first we take the putty knife and you slot it down in between the plastic and the uh, aluminium outer wrapper. Um, you sort of see it will go in if you push it hard enough and what you're doing is you're just loosening up those plastic connectors um, that sort of wedge it in there. If you just work your way around each side you, you'll feel it loosening up and you, you should feel the plastic base gradually uh, raise up um, and like I've done here on its side and then just give it a good push and the top will come off quite easily. Now what I'm going to do is actually look at the unit and there's three uh, wireless bits on there that need taken off. The two there just pull out quite easily um, and underneath them you'll see a spring. Put those to one side. Um, they are on quite uh, flimsy wires so make sure not to break those. Um, the third of the uh, wireless connect uh, aerials um, that you actually need to squeeze underneath which I'm just about doing there and then it pops off and again you'll see there's a spring underneath it so take that spring put it to one side and don't lose it. Um, I was a bit clumsy when I did it and managed to disconnect some wires but hopefully you won't do this. Um, you'll see some tape there um, on the side. The tape actually um, holds some of the wires in but what I'm doing there first of all is taking out uh, the screws. There are four screws in each of the corners of that drive. You'll need to take them out. Um, having a magnetic screwdriver is useful because it is a bit of a pain to do. Uh, but the, the four screws, three of them are small in size but there's one that's slightly bigger. Um, hopefully you'll be able to figure this out. You can see me there just doing a close-up of one of the actual uh, screw locations um, and again I'm just extracting it and you'll see we just go around taking each of them out. Sometimes they're difficult to get out um, and when you have unscrewed just flip the Mini Mac upside down and they'll come out. Now what I'm trying to do there was actually extract a drive not realizing that I had forgotten a screw uh, which I'm just undoing there at the end. Um, and again, popping out the actual screw, magnetic screwdriver would have been easier. Um, and you should see there on a close up any second the tape that actually holds some of the wires in place. Um, I'm just pausing it there because on the right hand side where I've circled is this soundboard connector. You must tape that out um, so you can extract the drive and again. Um, don't forget to reconnect it when you put it back together. On this video I forgot to do that. Um, you can see me, I'm just wiggling it out. comes out really easily, no problem with that. Now hopefully I should be able to get the drive off. As you can see, I think I've realised I've forgotten to take the uh, black tape off which you can see in two places. I've realised it now and here we go, just taking off the black tape. Um, all it does is hold some wires and if you try and yank it out what it'll do you'll rip out the uh, aerial wires. So it's just coming off on one side and there's another one um, I think it's on the left hand side as I was back then. So now you can see me oh, that, there's the other piece of tape. Pull that off to make sure the wires are loose. Um, everything is disconnected at this stage now. Fingers crossed the uh, drive should come out quite easily. There we go. Ah, uh, nope. I've got a screw by the looks of it. So just giving that. There we go. Coming out. And that was the one I forgot. Now finally it pops out. And uh, there's our screw that I couldn't get out, and there we go. So what we're going to do is replace the memory. On the actual board itself there are two 2 gig uh, memory boards. What we're going to do is take those out and the little metal clasps on each side, give those a small push and you should it should come out quite easily with your thumbs. There's a slight angle so it'll pop up and then it'll just come out. Um, so you need to do 
both these because we're going to replace the two two gig boards with two four gig boards. So yeah, there we go. Undoing the clasps, and then the it sits up, and then it just pulls out. Um, and putting the new memory, which is the two two gig board, uh, four gig uh, boards, is is basically the same but in reverse. You slotted it in at an unusual angle, which you'll see me struggling with. Um, take all the usual anti-static precautions, but once you get the boards out, it should be obvious how the new ones go in. So just push it in, and then push it down so it's flat on the circuit board, which I'm just about to do there. So that's it. That's one board in, and the metal clasps close round it and hold it into place. Uh, do exactly the same with the second memory board. Push it in and flatten it down. And the clasps should go round it. Um, what I'm probably doing here is just pushing them in to, to make sure, but I think at this stage it's absolutely fine. Um, and then basically reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. So um, get the drive, uh, you'll see how it goes in, it just pushes in, um, notwithstanding the fact that also also wires can get trapped, just be careful when you put it back together you don't trap any. Um, so that's the, the drive put back in, all the screws put in as well. Make sure they're nice and tight. Um, after the screws go in, um, make sure to uh, put the aerials back in. So springs in first, uh, and then the memories just clip on. Um, and then put the top back again, which just presses into place. And there, uh, your Mini Max been upgraded. Thanks.